again for everyone attending the session. Um, it's a great privilege um, and introduce another member of my own team. Adele Caraway is the Career and Skills Consultant. And I suppose has been with us for, for quite some time at this stage and has been, I suppose, working with us over the course of a journey where we've gone from being very much one-to-one -one based and very much doing, uh, I suppose, class talks around one-to-one -to, -one to being much more embedded within the curriculum and much more strategic in looking at college education strategies and linking into those. And um, we were delighted when university developed its own career development and employability strategy that it spoke about embedding employability into the curriculum in disciplinary specific ways. And Adele's really going to talk us through how she's managed to do that and get the academics on board, which we all know isn't always the easiest of things to do. So I'll, I'll hand over to you now and um, this presentation. I'll keep an eye on and I'll come back in towards the end of your presentation for that. Okay, thanks Adele. Great, thanks so much David. And um, I'm going to share my presentation now. And I just want to say, I hope you're not all feeling very tired. This will be a whistle stop tour, um, but I hope that you glean some information. And if it's speedy, um, you can always come back to me either through LinkedIn or through my own um, uh, to my own email, which I'll share with you. So if you just give me one second, and I'll just bring up uh, the slides here. Pardon now, I've just slight issue just bear with me one second please okay so all see this okay so Today, um, I, as, I, as David said, I'm going to talk to you about empowering UCD science students to develop their employability skills and about the framework that we developed uh, to deliver that for undergraduate and postgraduate students. As David said, um, I work in the Careers Network and have done so for a while. Um, and just got to set the scene and the context. So prior to coming to UCD, I worked in the IT and telecoms industry for quite an extensive period of time in my career and then embarked on a career change in 20, 2008, completing um, an MSc in Educational Guidance and Counselling. Um, thanks, Leona has just come back and said the slides are looking good, so appreciate that. Uh, I then joined UCD in 2010, and I've had many incredible, interesting career-related roles in UCD and in Trinity since graduating. So really where this has come from is that anecdotal evidence demonstrated that UCD College of Science students were struggling with their career development. And I really experienced this when I worked as internship manager with UCD College of Science for two years. I was then really delighted when a career and skills consultant role came up with the UCD Career Development Center, as we were called then, in 2016, uh, to work with students in terms of their career development and was delighted to accept that role. So before I jump into what we've been doing, I want to share with you just an infographic about UCD College of Science. And this, these are 2019 figures, given COVID and everything we haven't, they haven't been produced, um, but they've a good sense. Obviously, we had an increase last year with CAO, uh, but not substantially. So what we're looking at here is 5,225 students in total in the College of Science. And of those, 3,050 are undergrad students completing a four-year degree program, and 1,370 are graduate students completing a one-year taught program, taught master's program, and they are the cohorts that I'm really going to focus on. In the College of Science, we have 30 undergraduate degrees, which is amazing, and we have 32 taught master's degrees. So, Again, we've seven colleges in um, seven schools in the College of Science. We have biology and environmental science, biomolecular and biomedical science, the School of Chemistry, computer science, maths and statistics, and the School of Physics. So there's a broad range of programs, as you can see, um, being delivered by each of those schools. 
So when I took up my position very shortly after the Dean of um, Students came to me and said, Udell, we need to put together a career development framework. And it was very much in their strategic plan from feedback from students that they really, students were a bit stuck when it came to careers. So I said, grand, um, and that was Professor Tasman Crow, sure. I probably had a very quick turnaround time to do it, but it was all fine. So really what we did was came up with um, a framework that was going to embed career development across the four stages of the undergraduate program in science. And on the left hand side, you can see this is a 20 page document that was the framework, okay, and still is the framework. I'm going to take you through the stages of that at a high level and a couple of slides on. Um, so that was presented in 2016 to the top program board. Um, there was a bit of hooing and hawing because um, obviously elements of career development had to be embedded in each of these core modules so that we could get at and reach all of the students in each stage. The important piece was also that at the beginning of the following year and subsequent years, I will go back and present to the top program board, which included the college principal, the deans, um, the teaching and learning people and demonstrate what we actually did in that year. So no pressure, Edel. So again, this was 20 pages of what we actually did. And I don't think they'd seen it before. And it was really a really good communication, um, you know, opportunity because lots of academics would come and say to me, we think you just push CVs from one side of a desk to the other. And clearly we do an awful lot more than that. So in terms of the objectives of the framework, they were really to provide students with the opportunity to learn about relevant science career pathways and develop key skills associated with these. So really what we wanted to do is we wanted to embed at each stage because we believed that the career development at each stage was quite different. We wanted to provide students with facilities to engage with relevant employers in a meaningful way and to identify and hone the key skills required to make a successful transition to employment or to further study in a holistic way. I hate using the word KPIs, but we had to set some and, and the best thing to do is call them KPIs so that we could actually report on what we said we'd deliver. And at the start, that was a little bit scary because I wasn't too sure how it was going to go. So again, as I've said, the annual report each year was really showed what we did in the previous year and what we were going to do in the forthcoming year, which was good. So there were three important reports that really helped to feed into this strategy. Um, we had a review, a quality review, and out of the quality review in 20, this was 2018, the career development and employability prospectus from the UCD community. That research was, was conducted uh, by David and um, Marie Clark, Professor Marie Clark chaired, chaired that uh, research. Um, and that was really good because as I said at the start, anecdotally, we felt that students in science were a little bit stuck, but that report showed us that they were actually the same as arts and humanities students, which everybody, kind of knows that they have a real difficulty in identifying their degrees. So for me, that was brilliant because it actually, here's the evidence. And I was able to go back to the top program board and to academics with it. Obviously, the educational strategy was really important in terms of the student experience and the outcomes being linked to careers uh, for the very first time. And then, of course, our own career development and employability strategy. We call it David's strategy, right? Um, and that, obviously, there were key tenants in there and themes that were relating to embedding career development within the curriculum. So the other thing that happened that was really useful was um, David thought that it would be a great idea um, to set up um, career academic liaison groups. And these were groups that were made up of academics, so an academic from each school. So he went out to the college principal and said, what do you think? The college principal was very pro careers and said, absolutely. He went out to the individual schools and asked for an academic representative for this working group, um, you know, who would be interested and would be in careers and, and would be a champion for careers. So this is the first, um, the, some of these have changed, but many of them are still on it. I chaired um, that group, which which was was challenging, um, but I had great people on it, you know, who were really interested in, in careers. And the great thing about it was they would go back then to their schools and they would bring the wealth of things that we had to offer to the school and to those students. So coming from an academic and that being communicated by an academic was a really powerful thing to get the schools involved. So we set up in 2016, it's still running. And really, I have to give them great credit for helping, you know, contributing to um, the development of the framework and the delivery. 
Also an important piece was that we could tell academics that everything we did was grounded in theory and practice. So I'm so sure you're all familiar with the career edge, the key to employability by Dacopool and Sewell. And this is the model that we use. Um, so in everything we do, we, we, we incorporate the elements, you know, that are in the key. And, and I think moving forward for us as well, in terms of getting students to reflect and evaluate where they were at each stage and building on their self-efficacy, their self-confidence and their self-esteem. So that model is, is what we base all our teaching and learning on. So now I'm going to give you an idea of what we did at each stage, right? So what were we trying to achieve at each stage? So you might remember I said that we embedded in stage one and we see in trimester one, we see 500 plus students um, for approximately an hour. And really what we want them to do is at that point to identify the skills that they'll be developing through their science degree. Open up that it's going to be done through extracurricular engagement and internships, that they take a look at maybe some psychometric testing and infantries, and that they begin to think about developing an effective career development plan. But I mean, it's really about them settling in and understanding. It's funny when I ask them to put their hands up and you'll be in theatre L with 500 students, um, a show of hands this year, it was online, a show of hands to say who knew what they were going to do. 100% hands up, I know I'm going to do pharmacology, I know I'm going to do neuroscience. When you get into stage two, it changes a little, but it's interesting. So the student feedback, again, can't wait to get started, feel more focused about working in a career, and it helped me to engage at an early stage with my career choices. Then stage two, and I said this was more problematic in, in terms of embedding into each of these modules, but um, I had a great um, a, a dean who said that this was definitely going to happen because I certainly couldn't have done it. So again, we deliver in here, and this is probably about 110 minute session, for 500 students in stage two. So by embedding in each of those modules, it ensured that we saw every student in stage two. So uh, stage two is an important part for them because you might be aware, but science is an omnibus degree for two years. So um, then in stage two, they decide on their degree choice. So again, what we would do, and you might've heard Marisha talking earlier on about career edge. So again, we revisit what did you say in career age? Do you have no career plan? Do you have a vague plan? Do you have a clear plan? And then to get them to develop their skills, right? To research, develop evidence, key employability skills and attributes associated with specific science degrees. Because the science degrees are quite different. If you think about them, you know, somebody could be doing microbiology, somebody could be doing environmental science, somebody could do statistics or computer science. So really getting them to think about maybe the careers and the career pathways and the skills associated with those before they make their choice was a really important thing to do. Um, and to begin to think about a career action plan with respect to the first, second and third degree choice, because they may not get their first one. We're also asked them to attend the internship fair and we get them at this stage, at the start of stage two, we introduce them to the internship and ask them for an expression of interest. And clearly we get 100% interest in wanting to do an internship. So then it's in, in the trimester two, we do some CV workshops and things like that to help them begin to get ready for their internship in stage three. So again, you can see the feedback at the end and it's always interesting to get some feedback again here. Like, I'm not sure what I'm interested in. I'm not confident about career planning. You know, so you're always going to have those students in there that you hope that you will, through the service that you deliver, that you'll be able to help them move through on that. Stage three, this is when they've chosen the degree and it's now you're working with the individual schools as opposed to the college office, all right? Uh, so you're doing, um, you know, your workshops are really um, two or three workshops with individual schools. And this again is where alumni panels, we bring in um, students that are only out maybe between one or sorry, alumni that are only out one to five years. And it gives the students an idea of where, they're, where, where these graduates are now working, all right? Uh, so in stage three, their academic credit bearing internship happens in the summer of stage three. And they also, there's a UCD alumni mentoring program, which happens in stage three as well. So really what we're trying to do is get them to explore the career pathways and the internship opportunities that might be available to them. Um, to develop a skills profile, you know, to, to, to really build on their networking skills with key employers in order to effectively 
get that internship. And obviously applications, interview skills and all that are done as well. And then oftentimes we'll say, come and meet with the careers and skills consultant at this stage. Um, but the key thing is to source and complete either an internship or a research project. So now they come back all internshiped out, but we're still working on internships in the College of Science. You know, there's, there's a proportion of students that go out, but there's a lot who don't and still do a research project. But we have two great internship managers who, who are working on that and doing, doing great, great work. So when they come in at stage four, it's really about now getting ready to move them forward very, very quickly, either to decide if they're going to go on for graduate employment or they're going to go on to graduate study. So really, you're just empowering them to maximize um, their graduate career choices, finalize their action plan, and then begin to apply for graduate employment programs and graduate study. And, and really, you know, I, I think even after all these years of doing this program, you still see in stage four the students who really have had the head in the sands when it comes to career, you know, career decisions. But I think that that's definitely changing. The alumni panels are something that really allow them to, to see someone who sat in their seat not that long ago, and this is where they're going. And they get, you know, they get great nuggets of information from that. So as well as doing these, the other part of the framework is to develop some professional career development modules. So for undergraduates, so that's for stages one to four, we have a credit bearing module called Prepare for Your Future Career. And this is run twice, once in trimester one and once in trimester two, with obviously a different set of students in each. Um, and the numbers here, so probably about 200 students, we had more in trimester two this year because we were delivering online and we had more capacity. But our capacity is normally 98 because we're in an active learning lab where we can do a lot of group work. Um, it's a flipped classroom with blended learning approach. And the topics we cover are introduction to career development and uh, networking, self-awareness, skills, abilities, strengths and values. We look at the TDI, we do look at teamwork, presenting with impact, emotional intelligence, personal branding, leadership development, creative thinking and problem solving, effective time management, and goal setting and career action planning. And students find this really, really useful and they're getting credit for it. And if they do really well, they get a good grade. So it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for them. It's also, it's an elective. Then for the Thought Masters program, so this is stage five. Um, what the schools have done, and really it was the Career Academic Liaison Group that really, um, you know, had, had, had done this very well. So what we're doing is we're delivering modules into each of the schools for their master's programmes. So you'll see the schools on the left hand side that I mentioned already. So six of the seven schools have got a professional career development module for their master's students, which is really good. And again, you can see the things that we do. The different things we do in this is we're really, um, you know, really getting them up to speed and moving out very quickly to find employment. And um, so we do things like Sonaru, which is video interviewing. We have alumni panel. We have PhD discussions because some of them will go on to do PhD. And the ones with an asterisk actually get an individual mock interview. So you can see the amount of resources that goes in into delivering this kind of framework. So in terms of the uptake on careers network services, um, say looking at the figures in 1920, 726 students booked one to one appointments. So from when we started, that's probably increased by 50 percent. Um, 1530 attended careers fairs, that's probably up by 30 percent. And the big one is on the right hand side with 2163 students attending 27 careers workshops and career development modules. Um, you know, uh, so, so great engagement with students. Again, every year I was able to go back to the Thought Programme Board, and this is where I have to say thank you to the amazing UCD Career Network team, because all of what you see here in terms of offerings have been done by that team, um, and much of the delivery is done by the team, um, always being innovative. So website, you know, the Career Reg, the individual user guides for the colleges, you know, Jumpstart for International Students, our five-minute um, videos, um, our boot camps, you know, our alumni panel discussions. So every time I went back to um, a talk program board, there was more for me to talk about, which was absolutely brilliant. So now let's take a quick look at the 2016 Graduate Outcome Survey and the 2018. 
So the 2016 was when I went in first, right, and uh, started this programme. And the number of students who responded um, that were in employment from the College of Science was 60.7, which was actually not bad, seeking employment 8.8. So the last graduate outcome survey that we have is 2018. And the last time I went into the programme board, this is what I presented. So you can see that the number of students in employment is 73.9 and seeking employment is 5. Now, I'll put up my hands and say, can you make a correlation with what we do to this? Probably not, but it's a good story. And it's a great story to be able to go back in with after four years. Then just taking a quick look at where um, the percentage of College of Science graduate students, their employ, you know, the percentage employed. So you'll see in 2013, it was looking at 51.1. Now in 20, 2018 on the GOS, it was up at 73.9. A good story. So future directions for the development of career development network support, we're going to continue doing what we still do. There's a lot of resources. Career Reg that Marita talked about is evidence-based. It's going to allow us to deliver more evidence-based interventions. So to have more evidence to say, this is what we should be doing and to measure. So that's a really exciting um, opportunity for students and ourselves. Avantegro, um, my career, will be introduced in September 21, 2021, next September. This is a game changer in terms of the services that we can offer. Total digital transformation. We'll now be able to deliver bespoke solutions for specific college student cohorts. So again, good news. So what we can, I can say at the end of this program, or not the end, but the first, we said we'd come back after four years. We didn't expect COVID. So the percentage of College of Science graduates in employment is increasing every year. Now, this may be very optimistic for 2021, but that's a different year. So far, so good. There are employability interventions now in every school in the College of Science. I have to say, I'm really proud of that. COVID-19 in 2021 academic year meant we had to actually change everything and deliver online. So our lectures, our workshops, our consultations, our alumni panels, went fully online using Brightspace Virtual Classroom or Blackboard Collaborate and Zoom. We achieved similar delivery and student engagement numbers to 2019-20, and that's absolute credit to the team again in terms of engaging the students and to the students themselves. Um, with greater levels of student engagement in some areas like graduate bootcamp and the open workshops. So consistent student engagement with our support service, excellent student feedback. Again, we're so proud that for the QS um, rankings were number one for employability in Ireland. And again, going back to academics with that story is really, really good. I've talked about the introduction of Career Reg and the difference it will make to us and to Ab Integro. And I know that that was a total whistle stop tour. Um, but if anybody wants to contact me for more information or more detail, please do hook up with me on LinkedIn or by email at idelcarriage.ucd.ie. Okay, Adele, thanks so much for, the, for that presentation. Um, excellent. And, you know, I feel very lucky to have a gifted and exceptionally enthusiastic team that obviously includes yourself. The six colleges are 10 years ago whenever I first joined UCD. So thanks so much for that effort. We have just a little bit of time remaining. Um, one question is around UCD's use of trimesters. And if, if I jump into that, Adele, while you may be thinking about a yeah. question that Michael Martin has asked about how we manage assessment. That's that's a nice one, Dave. Thanks for being that. Um, yeah, so we talk about trimesters, not just reflects that our graduate population have a semester to do over the summer. And obviously, we have a lot of summer schools that go on in that time as well. So Adele, assessment in about a minute and a half. Okay. Yeah, assessment is challenging. We try and keep it to a minimum. So say for prepare your future career dave we would have two pieces of assessment for the students um you know the first one is an informational interview we use brightspace we try and use rubrics to keep it clean and tidy and um, we actually you know in terms of resource that it takes is huge so actually for prepare your future career i went back to the college of science and said can you provide a resource for that so we now have somebody, we have a resource that comes and grades it, and then the team moderates it. Um, you know, fantastic. We have a great team in there. So again, we help out with each other's assessment. So that helps also. But when they only have to moderate, you're talking about 
you know maybe 10 minutes per assignment compared to maybe maybe half an hour um, and that's the way we do it it's shared across the whole team so the whole team gets involved in, in, in assessment it does take quite an amount of um, resource there's no question about it even with some of it being outsourced but we're hoping that Abintegro is going to really take a good place and automate some of that in terms of the student you know can self-evaluate their CV and all that sort of stuff so I hope I've, I've answered that. Thanks Adele. I'm just conscious of time. There are a few other questions in that we haven't gotten to. Back Adele has already given her um, email.